Okay, David, so um, where does this go from here? We've, we've begun to cover quite a lot there, so uh, where would you like to take us next in this story? I think we need to look at the consequences of this. I mean, so what? Yep. Is what everybody says. Isn't yes, it? yes. Well, so what in terms of what happens to our global climate yep. is really important. Okay. The heating of the planet that we have set off and the amplification of it yeah. lead to a whole range of changes in the way the planet behaves. Mm -hmm. We get changes in storm intensity, we're already seeing those. We get changes in ice melt, we're already seeing those. Mm -hmm. We get changes in rainfall patterns, intense flooding in some areas, intense drought in others, we're already seeing those. We get increased acidity in the ocean because the water is picking up carbon dioxide and that makes mm. it more acid. That's affecting the food chain, it deals with plankton, it deals with coral reefs. Uh, we've lost about 40% of the phytoplankton, which is one of the basic organisms in the sea that mm. is at the base of the food chain. Um, there are many other consequences as well. One of them, which we're having to look at, is sea level rise. Mm -hmm. And the higher the temperature goes, the more ice is going to be melted from the, the land-based ice caps and the glaciers, and that changes the level of the ocean across the world. At the moment it's only going up perhaps 30 centimetres per century. Doesn't sound much, does it? But one metre would inundate pretty well most of Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And the latest study is showing that it's not just what we call linear, and I'm not going up by 30 centimetres a century, it's doubling in the rate of increase every 10 years, yeah, and that sure. might give us something like 6 metres change by the end of this century. So goodbye most of Holland, goodbye most of London, goodbye most of New York, and a hell of a lot of Chinese industrial cities, and, and, and yeah. so on, and so on, yeah, and so on. Yeah. Some islands will disappear, they're already going. So that sea level rise is a huge response. That sets off massive migration, yeah. which we can't cope with. Yeah. The impact of the withdrawal of fossil energy as the driver of economic growth yeah. puts our world finances into turmoil. It's already happening. Yeah. Food production drops by about 10% for every degree rise in temperature. Right. We're already seeing that effect on some of our basic crops. Yeah. Can you imagine if you drive that by another 4 or 5 degrees? Mm on a population that is increasing by another 50% in the next 30 years. Yes. Globally, we are facing the most catastrophic consequences of climate change in slow motion. Yeah. But because it's a long-term system with long-term delays, we tend not to act urgently yeah. yes. in the present yes. to deal with problems that we say, oh, this will affect our children. Who cares? Because this is what you call the pipeline, I think, isn't it? Well, I suppose you could say, what's the change in the pipeline? What, what are we inevitably facing in the future as a result of what has happened already? So, yeah. And with the conservative modelling that I've referred to, uh, you look at about 0.8 of a degree increase on what we've already had, which yeah. is about 0.8 already, so about 1.6 yeah. degrees increase from where we started at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. doesn't sound much. But it's a third of the change between an ice age and a warm period that we're now in, mm. added on top of that warm period. But if you're looking at the more accurate Earth system sensitivity that I've outlined, we've probably put into the pipeline another three or four degrees already. Right. And since people say that two degrees is the boundary of catastrophic climate change, yeah. we are already committed to a context of catastrophic change that threatens civilization as we know it yeah. and takes out many of the species uh, and biodiversity across the planet. And reduction in and human death from and famine course, and disease. And we're already seeing that happening in parts of Africa and yeah. elsewhere. There are many climate related deaths already yeah. occurring and that will escalate out of all proportion in the coming decades. Yeah. So consequences are massive. And um, what we don't have is a window of opportunity that says, oh, we can still go on with business as we've been used to it over the last few decades no. and deal with this problem in the, 90, in, the, in the 2030s or the 2050s. The problem is already out of control. 
and I would like to talk a little bit about um, if you like, addu addiction right. therapy here. Yes. Uh, in a sense, we are, as President Bush put it, we are addicted yeah. to to oil. Yeah. We are indeed. It is an addiction. Yes. Oil is cheap energy. It's available energy. It's yeah. energy that drives all sorts of processes, and it is energy that destroys the planetary mm. holding environment. The addiction says that at almost every level of our food production, of our transport, of our way of life, we are dependent on fossil energy. Mm. It's right into the whole cellular structure of what it is to be human. Mm. And we're saying not only are we running out of fossil energy, mm. peak oil and so on, but we're running into a point where using fossil energy is taboo. It's mm. destroying our life support system. Mm. And if we have to move off fossil energy, mm. then not only do we have to stop the addiction, yeah. but we have to detox the system, we have to take out of the atmosphere the products of our fossil energy use yeah. and reduce the concentration to one which doesn't put the temperature up so high that right. we face catastrophe. This so is stop the addiction, detox the system. This I think is where we want to take it next.